Let's talk about recycling. Hey developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net, and in this video we're going to talk about object pooling, which is a common performance method used in game development. Now, object pooling is a method of memoization, which is the concept of increasing space complexity to decrease time complexity. And what that means is more storage, or storing more things, just so that we can use less time. Now the reason we want to do that is obviously because we want to increase the performance of a video game and we want to remove stuttering whenever you're spawning an object. So some examples of when we want to use object pooling are mobile games because their hardware on a phone is simply just not strong enough and you can notice that sort of stuttering effect whenever you're spawning an object. And there's also the scenario where you're making a game and lots and lots and lots of objects are being spawned of course. For example a bullet hell game where you're constantly shooting bullets and those bullets are going to each have their own effects and they could be Unity game objects, which instantiating would really have a performance issue. And the same thing for any game where you're spawning something and you notice that the game freezes for like a split second or any period of time. That stuff can really hinder the game experience and if you use the simple technique of object pooling, you can fix that simply. Now to implement object pooling, we typically want to have some sort of abstracted code that's not included in our core programming, but allows our core programming to reference it. So basically we can have a function that allows being called from anywhere in the game by sending a string and requesting an object to pool. For example, we could use a dictionary where the keys are strings that are paths pointing to a Unity prefab, and our values can be lists of game objects that can be reused for pooling. Now, each of our game objects needs to be marked somehow, either by setting them as inactive or adding on a component that says, uh, or has a flag saying, I'm ready to be repooled. And we can then look through that entire list whenever we request a pooled object. Um, and so whenever that happens, if none of those objects can be reused, we basically will have to spawn in a new object and then throw that into our list so that we can ensure that we get an object if the pool is already completely being used. And that's actually all I have to say on how to implement object pooling and what it is. So I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to make your first game, there's going to be a course all the way up here if you click that card. And there's going to be also a free ebook on how to get all the tools you need for the first game. So I'll see you in the next video.